In this video, we're going to use utility maximization to derive a demand curve. So I'm going to use this Cobb, simple Cobb-Douglas utility function here. Utility equals x to the 0.5 times y to the 0.5. And to start with, let's look at uh, supposing the price of x is 2, the price of y is 1, and we have a budget of 4. So graphically, I have, I have the, our indifference curve map over here with indifference curves for 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, etc. utils here. And so graphically, if we were to try to maximize utility and solve for the, for the combination of x and y that gives us the highest utility, then graphically what we would do is draw our budget line to see approximately where the highest utility would occur here. Now with these prices, here's the y-axis, uh, if we have four dollars and the price of y is one, then we could afford four y's. And if the price of x is two, then with a budget of four, if we spend nothing on y, then we could afford two x's. And so if we just connect these two points, that will give us an idea of what the budget line looks like. So, okay, I've connected those two dots. Now, looking at this budget line, we're not going to be able to quite get to the point here where we have, that's going to be one and a half utils. So, but, but we can see that where the slope of this budget line is going to equal the slope of an indifference curve that is going to look a lot like this one, uh, where those two are equal is going to be somewhere in this neighborhood somewhere in in that kind of region. Now let's solve algebraically for the solution to see how close we have come there. So to solve this we we need our two equations and our, our first equation is going to be that the marginal rate of substitution which is the slope of the indifference curve equals the slope of the budget line and the marginal rate of substitution for this utility function is going to be 0.5y over 0.5x which is just going to be y over x and the slope of the budget line is the ratio of the prices the price of x over the price of y so that's going to be 2 over 1 so that's our first equation our second equation is the budget line equation itself which is just the price of x times how many units of x plus the price of y one times how many y's we use is equal to the budget of four so solving these two equations easiest thing to do here is probably going to be to solve for y so y equals 2x plug that into the budget equation for y here and we're going to end up with 2x plus 2x equals 4. And so 4x equals 4 that'll give us that the optimal number of x is 1 the optimal number of y's is 2 times x and so y equals 2 and that is approximately what I thought with this orange point here. Now in order to derive a demand curve looking at a utility function and prices and, and a budget or income here, we need to change the price of x, ceteris paribus. So we need to leave the budget the same, the price of y the same. Uh, if we want a demand curve for x, we're going to have to change the price of x. So, so let's change the price of x here to one dollar for example. So uh, here are our two equations. The marginal rate of substitution equals the slope of the budget line. Well the slope of the budget line if we change so then I'm only going to change the price of x to one dollar now. The ratio of the prices will be one over one. So y over x equals simply one and now our budget line, the second equation we need, is not going to be 2x plus 1y equals 4. It's just going to be x plus y 
1x plus 1y equals 4. Now before we solve this to find the optimum, let's, let's do this graphically again. So if we graph our budget line, if y's are a dollar, we can afford four y's just like before. But now because x's are a dollar, we can afford four x's. So if we connect those two points to make a budget line, it's going to look something like this. Now looking at that budget line, it looks like we're going to be able to get close to, if not right on, this uh, indifference curve here, which is for 0 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2 utils, and it looks like that optimal point is going to be somewhere in this neighborhood right there. So let's confirm that by doing the algebra. So if we take this first expression, y over x equals 1, that's just another way of saying that y equals x. Plug that into the budget line for y and we get x plus x equals 4. 2x equals 4 so in this situation x is going to equal 2 and y is going to equal 2. Now if we want to represent this with a demand curve, we could we could do this exact same thing for several other prices of x, but uh, it's sufficient to get an idea of what this demand curve will look like to have at least two prices of x, ceteris paribus. So price of x is 2, price of x is 1. Let's graph what this demand curve might look like here. So let me do that right down here. So let's draw our price axis and our quantity axis for the good X. We have two different prices, $2 and $1. And what we observe are two different quantities. We buy 1X at a price of $2. We buy 2Xs at a price of $1. Voila! There is a demand curve. Now as I said, we what we would probably want to do to get a better idea of what this demand curve looks like is pl do repeat this process for a price of 3 and 4 and 5. I encourage you to do that to get an idea of what's, what the other part of this demand curve up here will look like. Now one other thing we can do when we're talking about demand curves. In any economics class you need to know what are the things that can shift demand and you're given a list of things income tastes and preferences um, number of consumers taxes things like this now what we can do here if we wanted to demonstrate this to change tastes and preferences what we would be changing is the utility function that's what tells us about our tastes and preferences so if we change this utility function uh, because your tastes changed, maybe for some reason you decide you like x less and y more, well then you could change that exponent to a 0.4 and that exponent to a 0.6 and then uh, that would change your tastes and preferences and your demand curve will have a different shape then. Another thing we could do to demonstrate a shift in demand is we could now say well what would happen if we change the price of y, what will that do to the demand for good X. Well if in this situation these two goods are going to be substitutes and if we increase the price of Y then what's going to happen is that demand curve for X will increase. If we increase the price of Y we'll buy more of good X. A third thing we could do to visualize a shift in a demand curve is we could change the budget. And if we give this person a bigger budget, that will also increase this demand curve. Or if we were to decrease this budget from 4 to 3 or 2, then that would decrease the demand. I encourage you to, to redo this exercise on your own to verify that. It's a very interesting and fun use of utility maximization.